I mean, for you guys, then when you when you were when you were you know doing your 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 second album, um, what what how, why did you guys leave Ireland though? Because the um, did they yeah? Well, uh, we left Ireland because everyone said y'all need to be somewhere where there's a black music division. Y'all need to be somewhere where you do the music because at Ireland in Polydor, the only person that was really getting what we were doing and what was Leotis Clyburn. He's the person who signed us. He got us. He understood us. He was pushing for us. He didn't have, he did not have the support needed to get these groups all that they needed outside of once his job was done and he turned over a great album. Mm. Now it's time for the next crew of people. In the next crew of people, you know, pub, uh, publicity, in these, in promotion, in radio, and blah. It was time for them to do stuff, mm. and you know, we needed that, you know. And so everywhere we went, it was like, um, yeah, that you know, this is gonna drive your viewers crazy. This is gonna drive your viewers crazy, but there's a part of the story that I'm gonna leave out. But what I'll say is this. Um, mm -hmm. There was a deal, man. There was a deal on the table right before the island deal. There was another deal offered to us where we would have had that type of backing. But everything happens for a reason. I can't say, but everything happens for a reason. And I'm I'm glad everything happened the way it happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's so that's what it was. So you mean that you guys had a, an opportunity to be at a, at a at a more progressive label, but who made the decision to turn to, it to down? Not, not do it? Um James Manus. James Manus. I called you know, uh I called Jimmy a few months ago, maybe a month ago, and I said, Jimmy, I said, I just want to let you know, man, you made the right decision. You know, because every now and then he would go back and say, Oh, you know, I wish I would have took that deal, you know, blind. I say, nah, Jimmy, you made that absolute right decision because we're all where we are supposed to be today. Mm -hmm. We're all where we're yeah. supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? I I, I don't believe in, you know, no regrets. I don't believe yeah. in, anything. you know, so I think back on all these days fondly, you know what I'm saying? But then how can you just walk away from a, a label if you've signed over to them unless they drop you? You have to know you have to you have to ask for a release but why would they want to let go of you because they, we didn't see that this <laughs> because we didn't because it was nothing really to hold on to like when you think about it we had an album the album um didn't sell much they didn't push it much and it was kind of clear this is a group we don't get this group we don't know how to you know this is in a whole category which we don't really have you know, any dexterity in and stuff like that. It just made sense. It made sense for everybody because if they're holding on to us, what are they holding on to us for? Are they holding on to us to do another project that they wouldn't know how to promote <laughs> and then put it out yeah. there? And then, yeah, so it just made sense. We got lawyers to ask for a release and um, we were granted the release. You can do that. You know, it, it depends on um, the label. You know, we didn't say we have another situation. Can you give us a release so we can jump right in? <laughs> like, if we would have said that, then it would have been like, no, we did have another situation. It was Al B and them. That was the situation waiting. We never said that. We just, I think we may have even told them we were disbanding. I don't know what we told them, but it was, it, it was just like, can we leave, you know, in these guys, uh, ultimately we got the release because I remember the day we got the release, we were so happy. We went out and we celebrated and um, because we got the release. Now, at this time, then, what has Andre taken over at Motown? Ah, you are good, my friend. <laughs> you are good, my friend. Listen, so check this out. Full circle moment. Remember when I said when we, when we were uh, years before that, we sent a demo <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the Motown yeah. Records and they never... We got signed originally 
through Al B. Shores Absolute to Uptown Records. That's where we got signed. Uptown. First, we were at a party. I will never forget this. We were at a party. And uh, someone said, yo, you know, Andre Harrell is no longer going to be at Uptown. And we said, what? We're signed with Uptown. What's going to happen with us? And at that party, we found out Andre's taking you guys with him to Motown. Horace Brown mm. and Anthony Hamilton. Mm. We were the three. And Anthony was at that party. I don't know if he got that information like we got it, but um, and I and, you know, and I just want to say shout out to a woman by the name of Catherine Wilkes. I've never I haven't seen Catherine Wilkes since I was a teenager, but uh she gave me some advice. I was at the party and I was angry. Man, this is this is terrible. I dream <laughs> all these years of being on uptown records. Finally, we're gonna be late mates with with Joe to see. Like we're gonna be, you know, this is it, you know. And um, I was sitting there by myself and Catherine Wills came up to me and said, what's the matter? And I said, I'm just, I'm angry because, you know, everything just changed. And, you know, and she said, the reason why you're mad, she said, and she was so right. The reason why you're mad, she said, is because she said, you see all these people? And I said, yeah. She said, you think they're in control of your destiny. And she said, they're not. She said, you have your own destiny. They're not in control of your destiny. So whatever your destiny is, it is that. And she said, mm -hmm. everybody is just a pawn. She said, and if they're going to help you get to your destiny, she said, they can't even do nothing about it. Don't worry about it. Do what you do. And I never forgot that to this very wow. day. Wow. And when I walk up to meetings and all that stuff, I don't walk into a meeting and say, my life is in your hands, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's not. My destiny is my destiny. What's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah. Whether I like it or not, whether you like it or not. So ultimately, just do what I do. Yeah. So, yo, we, we ended up, you know, so it was like, y'all going to be on Motown. And I grew up loving the Jackson 5, and I left that part out. Uh, but growing up, uh, you asked me about growing up in Queens. I used to listen to the Jackson 5 so much. They were before my time, but I had a high voice and so did little Michael Jackson. I'm going to tie this together. Um, and ultimately, uh, instead of toys for Christmas, I used to ask for Jackson 5 albums. Can you just wow. give me So I know everything about the Jackson 5, every B-side. I, I know the stuff that was on the other side of a single that never was on an album that you, mm -hmm. you can hardly... Oh, that song. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and so I grew up looking at that logo, Motown. So I started getting excited. I started getting excited about the fact that, okay, we're not going to be on Uptown. We're going to be on Motown. And it's like, okay, all right, okay, <laughs> all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. So, you know, it's like if somebody said you're either going to be on Cash Money, but <laughs> Is, oh, we're going to be on Kenneth's money? Oh, we're going to be like Drake. We're going to be like Nicki Minaj. But then they say, no, you're going to be on Def Jam. And it's like, yeah, but it's not cash money. But then you start thinking about the legacy. Yeah. Of, and then you say, okay, I can get with this. <laughs> I can get with this. And that's how we felt about Motown. Well, that's how I felt about Motown. But I, I do wonder then, if because if you had stayed at Uptown, would they have signed so for real? So for real was already there. Ah, uh, okay. I'm on so for real. They were already there. So for okay. real was already there. We were gonna be okay. we were gonna be label mates with So for Real. So I guess it yeah. was gonna be like the temptations and the four tops. You know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because heavy had it down with the with the So for Real with him with the Manifa, he had the Lost Boys good when he took over. So they still would they still uh, um I spent about five hours talking to Jimmy Jam Jimmy 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 Love Jenkins. Jimmy Jenkins. Oh, you, you spent. Oh, man. Um, yeah. They love Jimmy Jenkins. Jimmy Jenkins. Shout out to him, man. <laughs> Listen, can I can I just take some time out and just say something about Jimmy Jenkins? Go ahead, something yeah. not going to say. It's something that a lot of people are not going to say. Bruh, there was a whole corner of the industry that talked just like him. Literally. 
They watched him. They watched his mannerisms. They watched his slang terms that he would create. People became him. Jimmy Jenkins literally was a guy that had all these executives walking, talking, dressing, trying to think like him. I went every other label we was going to. They had a Jimmy Jenkins and they were trying wow. to be like. Him. They were trying to talk friend. like him. They were literally trying to talk like him, be like him. Jimmy Jenkins, you've seen Jimmy Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. Swag. Jimmy Jenkins swag. You've seen his swag on other people. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. There's other people that you've seen his swag on them. They're stars. You've seen his swag on those people. Okay? So shout out to Jimmy Jenkins, man. Yeah. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that kind of age of somewhere in between. Us, or either loving us. I wish I did. 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 I wish I no, 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 okay, you're okay. They don't understand what those people are doing. Oh, There's no need for you to be running around. I mean, I was, I love all different jobs.